Hi, I'm Dr. Weiss. I'm going to talk to you about jet injection anesthesia for no scalpel vasectomy. Jet injection dates back to the 1800s with the so-called aquapuncture. Not much happened until the 1950s when Dr. Robert Hinkson, an American anesthesiologist, observed a man who had experienced high pressure trauma to the hand. The pressure had forced oil into the man's hand without leaving a visible surface wound. So Hinkson, together with an engineer, developed the hypo spray. Star Trek fans will remember that. A device no larger than a standard flashlight was developed with a spring that exerted 3,900 pounds per square inch against a disc in a metal column. This forced a fluid through a tiny orifice at 600 miles per hour. Because the orifice was small, only 11 grams of pressure was exerted at the skin. However, this was sufficient to drive the fluid uh, into the subcutaneous tissue without leaving a visible surface wound. By 1956, a thousand people per hour could be vaccinated using Hinkson's hypo spray. In 1992, I introduced the no scalpel vasectomy technique into Canada, and it became very popular very quickly, I believe, because men are fearful. The thought of no scalpel, no knife, was reassuring. However, a question I encounter frequently in my practice is, where do you put the needle? And it appears there is no question that men are fearful of needles as well. The average age of a man having a vasectomy in North America is 35. Few men under that age visit a doctor with any regularity. So vasectomy is often the first encounter with the medical system. So that being the case, vasectomy by itself is an intimidating prospect, never mind getting a needle in your scrotum. So the thought of having uh, anesthesia, local anesthesia for vasectomy without a needle is a welcome one for many men. Let me give you some detail on the use of the jet injector. The technology is really very simple. You're forcing a fluid through a tiny orifice under high pressure. What comes out the other end is a very fine stream that passes through the skin without requiring a steel needle. The difference, however, between this and a steel needle is that the spray disperses in a cone-shaped distribution as it passes through the subcutaneous tissue to a depth of penetration of up to six millimeters. With the needle, you deposit a bolus of lidocaine around the vas. We have to remember that lidocaine does not diffuse between uh, scrotal compartments. If that bolus of fluid is deposited in the wrong compartment, you'll have diminished or absent anesthetic effect. Each shot of the jet injector delivers 0.1 of a mil of lidocaine or other fluid. I'll repeat, 0.1 of a mil of lidocaine. With this method of anesthesia, you deposit three shots or 0.3 mils of lidocaine over each vas for a total of 0.6 mils for the entire vasectomy. Contrast this with standard vasal block anesthesia where you deposit three to four mils of lidocaine over each vas for a total of six to eight mils total lidocaine for the vasectomy. There is significant cost savings in high volume vasectomy practices.